Then we cut to video six and narrate again. <clears throat> narrate what? Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Justin Nelson's Projects. Now today's project is tracing down a leak in the cooling system of your vehicle. This applies to nearly all water-cooled internal combustion engine cars. Sometimes a leak is what we call a pressure leak. Usually, even if you can see spots in the driveway, it's very hard to tell what or where that leak originates as it generally only leaks while under pressure while driving. So what we do is add a special ultraviolet or UV tracer dye in with the engine. Antifreeze. Now two things to note, only use the antifreeze or coolant specified by your vehicle manufacturer. Most people know this part, but in some cases, such as my GM vehicle with Dexcool, the tracer dye itself also needs to be the correct formulation. Different coolants have different pH levels and we don't want a chemical reaction which could cause further damage to gaskets and other parts of the cooling system. More about different coolants later on in the video. Now before we head out to the driveway, I have to say never open the radiator cap if you have one while the engine is hot or even warm. If like my truck, there is no radiator cap and the reservoir has this style of cap as long as you aren't overheated you can slowly open it as you'll see me do here in the driveway i've got a coolant leak that i cannot spot i, I can smell it a little bit and i seem to lose about half a gallon a week or so and it's got to be like a pressure leak so the only way to really figure out where the hell it's coming from is to put some uv dye in the engine is hot but it's not hot hot yeah, you hear that, that little hiss? What I'm gonna do, since the engine's hot, is go ahead and try and do this with one hand without getting this shit on me. <laughs> Dump this in. And then, top that off with some coolant. And what that will do is, since the engine's already hot, it's gonna suck some of that into the system. And then I'm gonna come out here in a couple hours, and by then it should already be a little dark out, and then I can start it up, warm it up, it should circulate through, and wherever it's leaking, that's when I'll grab the old UV flashlight. All right. And I always pour sideways to avoid spilling, and I'm gonna make an ass of myself. Well, not too bad. Ah, uh, yeah, I also usually use two hands. But since the engine is already warm, as it cools down, it will suck some of this in. And am I at the full mark yet? I believe it's kind of hard to read on the camera screen, but I'm right at the hot full mark. If you overfill, you're gonna end up having UV reflections all over here. So I'm gonna close the hood. I'm gonna come back here in a little bit. By the way, this will help circulate it a little too. You can actually see it in the reservoir bouncing up and down as I do that. So this might help a little. Be careful when you grab these, make sure they're not scalding hot. And actually once I start it, that might suck down a little. I'm gonna come back in a couple hours. It's about 3.15 p.m. and it gets dark at 4.30 around here in December. So we'll meet you back out here with the UV light. Okay, so what I did there was add the UV tracer dye first to the reservoir and then topped it off to the full mark with coolant. Pro tip, which I didn't do here, wipe down the reservoir tank the best you can to more easily view the level from the outside. But then I squeezed the upper hose a few times to hopefully burp some air out of the radiator pulling in the tracer dye to the rest of the system. Then I let it fully cool down and went back out with the UV light. Okay, well, of course it started raining, but it's died down a little bit, so I went ahead and started the truck back up and I've got the flashlight out. This flashlight happens to have a shit ton of modes, but one of them is, if I click through them all, there it is, UV. I've gotta let it run until something starts to leak. But what I'm really looking for right now is any like remnant leftover UV dye that somebody might have used in the past on their AC system or something. Now I'm butting in real quick because I actually recommend going over the entire engine bay with a UV light before even adding the UV dye and make note of any spots where a previous mechanic may have used such a dye on the cooling system or even the air conditioning system. This way you won't confuse a past problem with a current problem. But take pictures if you do find any UV dye glowing so that if that gets bigger later on, you might have the same problem a previous owner had. Now back to actually hunting down the leak. Remember what I said before that the engine would suck it all back in? It sucked all that coolant out of the reservoir so there's none in there. Let me pause and fill that up. right now. Now you probably won't see it glow in here, 
until it circulates through the system a little bit. But now I've got to put the cap back on and basically let it warm up. And I need to close this hood because it keeps like, uh, the rain just keeps coming and going. But I want to let this warm up a good 10, 15 minutes and then come back out here with the UV and see where we're at. And keep an eye on that level too. Now real quick, just make sure throughout this process, especially with the engine running, that you keep that reservoir full of coolant. And occasionally check the temperature gauge inside the vehicle. It's been running about 15 minutes. The level hasn't seemed to change. And obviously with regular white light, I don't see shit. But let's go to... Nah, I passed it up. It's so many clicks to get to the UV. Okay. So what I'm doing here after I let it run for about 15 minutes is I'm starting with the most common places you're likely to find a leak. The reservoir itself is a common issue. Then I look at all the hoses, including the heater hoses. Then move down to the water pump, which in this case is right in the front of the engine right here. Then I walk around to the side of the truck and well... Well, I'll let past Justin explain the reveal. Oh! Okay, so that's way down there. Let me look at it with the regular light. See how it looks just like just some liquid there? That's obviously, that's, yeah, glowing. And it's coming from up here. So it's either, oh, uh, please don't be the actual radiator. Right there, you can see that top drip there. I think there might be a crack in the plastic part of the radiator. That is NFG. I think that's it. I think my radiator can crack. Oh, look, you know what? You can see the steam coming out right there. So as you can see, even without the UV light, as I squeeze that upper hose, there's most definitely a crack in the radiator that I would have never seen without first using the UV dye. Now that I know I need a new radiator, I ordered the part, replaced it, refilled everything, and it's been over a month and things are working perfectly. Now if you'd like to see a video on the actual radiator replacement, let me know in the comments. I do have some footage and still pictures of that process I can use and some tips that you might find helpful if you're replacing a radiator. Now, a couple things to note. First, if you found yourself adding plain water prior to fixing this issue, you may want to flush your entire cooling system. I plan to release a video showing some tips and tricks for that later on in the year. Now, if you did and you used purely distilled water and you know how to use a coolant tester or a refractometer, you can drain some and then use undiluted coolant until you reach that 50-50 mix. Second though, Never use the so-called works with all vehicles coolant. Always find the correct coolant that is specific for your vehicle and you only use coolants that are approved. Saving a couple of bucks today will cost you a lot down the road. As I mentioned earlier, make sure the tracer die that you purchase is also compatible with your cooling system. Links to some options are in the description below. Meanwhile, if you have a GM 3800 or any engine where the thermostat is at the top of the engine and has a bleeder valve, check out this top video video to learn how to change that thermostat with almost zero spillage. Otherwise, YouTube thinks you might like this video. In any case, thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like video projects in general, consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks again for watching.